Justin, congratulations on the film. Um, I've actually seen it twice and I found it exhausting both times in the best possible way because of that, that feeling of dread and foreboding that goes with it. It's a really tense experience. Um, and it looks at the events leading up to the, the mass shooting in Port Arthur in Tasmania in 1996. I wondered when you received the script, how did you react? Did, did you actually want to make the film once you'd read it? Um, I was hoping that the screenplay was terrible and I kind of knew it wouldn't be because Sean and I um, have, have worked on a couple other films. Um, and, that, and that was it was just because I was living, I, and I am still living in Tasmania uh, this day in uh, uh, Australia, you know, it kind of changed the country uh, forever and, and, and still for many, many people, it's incredibly painful. So, you know, you sort of know doing a film about this subject matter, it's, it's um, you know, it, it's, it's fraught with a lot of challenges. So, uh, yeah, I was hoping that it wasn't good, but it was really good. And, and it just stayed with me and um, Sean and I sort of talked about it a lot. And, you know, it was me sort of talking about why I wanted to do it and why I wrote it in the first place. And, and I just trusted him. I, I, I sort of trusted why we, we were making it. And um, a lot of it, to be honest, had to do with a particular scene in the film, which is sort of a particular scene where, where, where the, the, the main character walks into a gun store and sort of buys these shocking weapons, like he's buying some fishing rods yeah. um, without a gun license. And there was something about where that scene was positioned within the screenplay and the way in which it sort of, I guess, in a very intimate way, traveled with this character to that particular scene that, that was very powerful to me and, and emotionally connected with me about gun reform, um, you know, more than anything I'd sort of read before. It, it's, um, it, it was, um, yeah, very powerful um, writing. And actually that scene was something that was a kind of, you know, something we kept on coming back to as, as, as a very, very strong kind of um, compass um, as to kind of what the film was and what it needed to be. You mentioned you, you live in Tasmania and the events took place in 1996, which sounds a long time ago, but I'm sure for people in Tasmania and indeed Australia as a whole, it, it's no more than the blink of an eye really, because it must still be, particularly on the island, extremely raw and you will have seen that at first hand, I'm sure. So once it was announced that you were going to make the film, did you face any opposition locally? And indeed, since it's been released, has there been any opposition to it? Uh, yeah, the, the day that it was announced that we were sort of making it, was, it was a very tricky sort of process leading up to it because no one wanted anything to do with it, to be honest. And um, even sort of victims of crime in, 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 in Hobart, which is an organisation that allows you to... Um, you know, have 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 a sort of dialogue and a, and, a, and and at least a sort of understand, be able to kind of explain the, the point of view of the film and why you're you're making it. Um, it, it was very hard to get them engaged as well. So, um, so when it came out, um, you know, there was there was a lot of shock and there was a um, a lot of questioning as to kind of what the film wasn't. Um, I think that there was a sort of fear that it was going to be. Um, very explicit in the um, in the shootings and um, which of, of course, course the film's not. not that. Yeah, yeah. So look, it really was. We, we were we were shooting the film at the time. We were in sort of second week of filming, and you know the prime minister of Australia at the time was talking about it in question time. It was that it had, it had hit you know that sort of nerve um, in 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 Australia on that day. So. Um, it just, you know, we, I don't, I don't think we were surprised, um, but it definitely made us deeply aware of the responsibility of doing it, and it did have an effect on the shoot. You know, we only we had two more weeks to, to to shoot, and there was a there was a sort of tense questioning continually about, you know, the why we're we making the film, and what's the point of view, and where do you put the camera. And, um, how do we how do we be sensitive about this in in the in the, in the best possible way? So um, yeah, it 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 was something that um, you know people started talking about quite a bit here. 
you mentioned that scene where the central character goes and buys some weapons with shocking ease, to be quite honest. And the, the film actually has a little bit of a sort of twist in its tail at the end when we see the captions about gun legislation and you think you're being taken down one path and then you realise actually what the aftermath was of the Australian government's actions post-shooting. Has the situation changed at all in Australia in terms of, of gun laws or is it much as it was then? No, I think, look, I think at the time um, after the, 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 the shootings, there were extraordinary uh, gun reforms that happened bipartisan in six days. So that, that definitely happened and that changed the gun culture in Australia and has forever. But what we sort of discovered was that, you know, o over the years there has been lobbying um, and there has been softening uh, of those laws and some of those reforms actually didn't sort of play out. So even though there were, were um, incredibly significant changes, um, you know, the, the, it, it was a surprise to us and a shock to us that, um, you know, what we thought of might, might have been in place or... Um, the softening of some of those reforms and how they had happened were, you know, were concerning. So, um, you know, and for a generation of Australians that, you know, we, we, we had a lot of young people come and see the film in, in, in Australia. And, you know, a lot of that had to do with um, just understanding what happened and, and, and where it happened, especially for, for, for those young people that live in Tasmania. Um, you know, it is a it is a it is a day that is sort of spoken in very very hushed tones and mm. um, very difficult to kind of talk about openly. So, um, you know, for, for many, the 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 idea of gun reform that had come out of these events, this event, and kind of what the history of the gun reform had been in Australia, I think, was new to a lot of young people. So you've got um, Caleb Landry, Landry Jones in the main role and he won Best Actor at Cannes last year for his performance and he really is outstanding. To be honest, I've only ever really associated him with supporting roles in things like Three Billboards and things like that. Never really seen him in, in a lead role. I wondered why you chose him for, for this particular part and how did you persuade him to take it? It was very instinctive. I think Sean and I were thinking who is the sort of type of actor that we would, we, you know, and there was something physically about Caleb that we um, were, were very, sorry, I've just got my dog. Ah. Yeah. And the dog's um, name is? Uh, Garçon. Um, Garçon. Bonjour, Garçon. Definitely. Um, yeah, look, we, he, he was... He, he was someone that physically we thought was really interesting for the role, but, um, you know, after a while we thought, well, why not um, Caleb? So we actually met him in Los Angeles and, and, and had a meeting with him and, and that changed everything for us. And we thought, you know, this isn't actually such a crazy idea, a Texan playing Australian. This is a very immersive actor. There's a quality about him that, that, that feels, feels right to the vision of the film and, um, yeah, and he, and, he, and he came on and learnt this incredible kind of accent and watched a whole lot of Neighbours and Home and Away from the, the 90s to kind of, uh, yeah. you know, get that particular kind of dialect going and, um, you know, had an incredible voice coach. But, yeah, I would never have thought about casting an American for this role, but, but, but there was something so particular about Caleb. And, and he's extraordinary. He, he is um, one of the finest actors I've... I've, I've worked with he really is he is I mean he is brilliant but I've got to say for me it's it's a film that's actually anchored in four performances there's him mm. there's Judy Davis as his mum Anthony LaPaglia as his dad and Essie Davis as Helen they're all fantastic and they they all interact they all show the effect he has on them as as individuals how did you manage to get them all together because that's such a a powerhouse quartet and they're all in demand i'm very lucky i, I really am <laughs> that, that that's like a kind of chekhovian ensemble <laughs> those four <laughs> yes. um i was just very lucky you know i i i um and, and i also think that the script was really strong and the conversations were very easy to to, to be had about the the work and uh judy was someone that i just uh 
can't admire admire enough of she's just extraordinary and um you know I sort of had to pinch myself when she was on set remembering all the films that I have watched of Judy's that you know really inspired me and changed me um as a as a young filmmaker and then um you know a Anthony I've been a huge fan of and 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 of course Essie who's you know also my partner and um so you know, it, it, and, and to be honest, that was really important about the screenplay. I, I always saw it wasn't, it, you know, the, the, especially the first half of the film was like a family drama and, and there was something kind of very intimate and very kind of um, family about it. And, um, you know, I'd even say Helen character was, was in, in a sense, a kind of extension of the family. Um, so to get that kind of, yeah, that quartet right was, was really important. I've got to ask you about the title of the film because we, we do hear the central character's name, Martin, a couple of times in, in the film. And indeed, Martin was the name of the, the shooter. In, in oh, no, you film. don't. It's actually, it's, it's never mentioned. I, it's only I never mentioned could have sworn I heard somebody call him Martin. Maybe his mum, no. but I've, no. I obviously got that wrong. But I'm intrigued by... I'm very, very. I was very particular about that. So. <laughs> I, um, but I, 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 can, I can imagine you thinking it, but... Um, I, yeah. 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 Um, but I wondered where I mean we learn where Nitram comes from in that it's 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 a nickname that he hates. But I'm wondering if that mm. was for real or whether it was something that, that you created. Look, it was it was interesting because it was this this sort of name was rumored. We'd heard sort of on the you know, around the place as you kind of hear these these sort of stories of of you know this being a, a kind of nickname a, a sort of derogatory nickname but but it but actually it, it came from um a discussion about identity when we were sort of looking at the script and wanting to understand kind of you know what what you know digging deeper into kind of what we felt as though that sort of point of view was and you know this sort of idea of someone out running a name a name that's sort of you know shackled to them and desperately trying to be part of other tribes you know and and that that felt really powerful and in Australia that 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 is you know everyone's got a nickname and, and everyone either loves the nickname or hates the nickname and there is this kind of continual questioning about you know the name you have or how people perceive you or whether you're part of a group or as I said a sort of tribe so there was there was just sort of something about the the title and, and 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 that name that sort of seemed to speak to you know kind of what was in the underbelly of this of the screenplay anyway. But I, I wondered if perhaps it was a, a sort of typically cruel nickname that had been given at school, which the kids because it was Martin backwards meant that he was stupid. I think that there was also this sort of really kind of literal thing of nits as well you know that that, that the kind of I mean I remember sort of going to school and there'd always be the nit outbreak from one kid and suddenly you know you're going home and having to wash your hair three times and I that that is a very Australian thing I just remember you know growing up and being at school and and nits being being the thing that that sort of suddenly drove everyone home to be washed and then come back the next day and try to get you know so it was there was something about it there was a there was there was sort of a nostalgic kind of feeling about it that that, that I think also spoke to Sean and I we've run out of time which is a real shame um but thanks very much for for allowing me to to have a chat with you about such a, a tremendous film which has yes. such an impact <laughs> and it packs Thank such you. a punch Thank so um Thank you very much indeed. No worries. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.